In 2018, Amazon launched a game-changing program called the Delivery Service Partner Program, or DSP for short. It gave everyday people a chance to become partners with one of the biggest companies in the world. All you needed was great credit, liquidity between $10,000 and $40,000, and the ability to showcase your experience and potential through a few rounds of interviews. If you could do that, you were well on your way to starting a very profitable business, delivering millions of Amazon packages. But fast forward to 2024 and things look a little different. Today, we're talking about what has changed and what has stayed the same since the launch of DSP 2.0. Whether you're considering joining the program or you're just curious about how it's evolved, you're about to hear how the Amazon DSP program transformed over the years and what that means for you if you're still considering the program. Okay, so I'll start with the change most people care about. How much revenue are you making and what's the profit margin? Profit margins are everything in business, right? Well, back in 2018, DSPs could expect to see margins between 10% and 20%. The average total revenue for a DSP was $5 million. And for a lot of us, that meant annual profits of anywhere between 500,000 to a million dollars. Your revenue and profitability was a factor of how many vans you had on the road, how many routes you ran, the performance of your team every week, and how efficient you were with vehicle maintenance. Many DSP owners like myself purchased and owned own their fleet of vehicles. Some DSP owners purchased drug testing sites, others invested in and built tech platforms to help with route optimization and employee performance tracking, all of which help with the profitability of the DSP. But things have changed. Now, in 2024, most DSPs are seeing margins closer to 5 to 10%. And the changes Amazon has made to the structure of the program and the growth of the program has been a huge factor in decreasing margins. And here's why. Before, Amazon gave you a fee to cover the cost of vehicle maintenance. You could set up your own mechanic shop, use third-party services, which meant you had some flexibility and can enhance your margins. Some people even bought their own vehicles, but today, Amazon manages all maintenance in-house. While that takes one thing off your plate, they've eliminated the vehicle fee, which really tightens your margin. Insurance costs are another big factor. With more data on how DSP operations work, insurance companies have started to price policies based on the actual risk, which means premiums are much higher. For me, one way I mitigated those rising costs was by joining a captive insurance program, which essentially means forming a group with other businesses to share the risk and keep costs lower. It's something I recommend looking into if you're in this for the long haul. As the DSP program has grown, so has the number of operators. And that means routes are now spread out a lot more. Early on, it wasn't uncommon to consistently run 40 to 50 routes daily. But now with so many more DSPs in the mix, most are running around 20 routes a day with some hitting 30 during peak seasons. In fact, there are some DSPs running as low as 13 to 18 routes, which is a big shift from the early days. In the early days, the DSP program, if let's say your driver completed all of their routes on time, delivered packages accurately and kept customers happy, you could easily hit that fantastic or a fantastic plus rating, which meant an additional weekly bonus for your DSP. It was pretty straightforward to achieve. But now with the introduction of enhanced technology that monitors every move your driver makes on the road and much stricter performance standards, those bonuses aren't easy to reach anymore. That said, the enhanced monitoring has a major upside. It's created much safer drivers on the road, which is definitely a mitigating factor. If you're a DSP owner who really hones in on safety and delivery performance, you can still hit those metrics and earn those bonuses. But it's not something that's gonna happen on autopilot anymore. You've got to stay on top of your team and be constantly coaching them to make sure they're performing at their best. Okay, this is the second biggest difference I've noticed, the difficulty of joining the DSP program. Back in 2018, if you had the initial capital, some solid experience building and coaching teams, and a decent business plan, you are probably going to get in. Sure, it was still competitive, but nothing compared to what it is now. By 2024, Amazon has raised the bar 
progress significantly. You need to bring real management experience to the table and you have to show that you can handle complex operations from day one. Plus, with so many more DSPs in the game, competition for those prime delivery routes, especially in major cities, is fierce. It's much harder for new DSPs to break in and establish themselves. If you make it through the application process, which used to take around six weeks to a couple of months, you probably won't get your first choice location. In many cases, you'll have to move to wherever there's an opening. On top of that, Amazon is now specifically screening for operators who are willing to be hands-on running the DSP day in and day out. So if you're looking for a more hands-off passive approach, this might not be the right fit for you. Also, the lead time to getting approved can now stretch to 18 months and the process is much more involved than it used to be. So if you're thinking about joining the program, just know it's longer, more competitive than it ever was before. All right, the third major difference is the fleet requirement. One major operational change is with the vehicles. In 2018, DSPs had the option to lease vehicles or buy their own. And there was much more flexibility in terms of the type of vehicles you could use. But today, Amazon mandates that you use Amazon branded vehicles. And now there's a big push towards electric vehicles as part of Amazon's sustainability goals. Now, don't get me wrong, having electric vehicles is great for the environment, but when they break down, it's a whole different story. It's harder to find mechanics who can fix electric vehicles. And even though Amazon provides in-house maintenance, the reality is that depending on your station, you could be waiting longer than you'd like to get your vehicle back. The reason? Amazon hasn't ramped up capacity to handle all the repairs and there are a lot of vehicles needing work. So when your electric vehicle has issues, and trust me, we've been seeing a lot of issues with these new electric vehicles, you're down or out. In the past, you could just rent another vehicle or use one of the vehicles that you own and you'd still be able to keep running that route. But now if a vehicle goes down, you're stuck waiting and that means a lost route for the day and for however many days it takes to get your vehicle fixed. Okay, number four, biggest change, labor costs. Let's talk about it. So back in 2018, DSPs had a lot more flexibility when it came to paying drivers. Sure, you could offer competitive wages, but there weren't strict requirements around it. Fast forward to today, and Amazon has implemented minimum wage standards along with benefit packages like health insurance and paid time off. This is great for recruiting and retaining talent, but it also adds a significant cost that DSPs have to manage. Labor now accounts for 50 to 60% of revenue, which really tighten those profit margins. In fact, labor is going to be your highest expense as a DSP. Now, Amazon has always set minimum pay rates. In 2018, depending on your location, that ranged from 14 to $16 per hour. Today, in most big cities, that has jumped to 22 to 23 per hour. But here's the thing, the pay rate increase isn't the biggest shift. Most DSPs were already paying higher rates to attract better talent. What really made the impact is the significant increase in workers' compensation insurance. These rates have gone up drastically over the years and for a good reason. Your drivers are constantly on the road and as a DSP owner, you want your team to leave their routes and come back safely every day. But accidents do happen and the insurance costs have risen to reflect the risk of having the drivers on the road all the time. So while wage increases are important, it's the rising cost of insuring your team that is truly affecting the bottom line. The fifth major change I've noticed was technology advancements. Back in 2018, the tech side of things was pretty simple. You had basic routing software and app that got the job done, getting packages from the station to their final destination. But that was about it. Fast forward to now and Amazon's technology has become much more sophisticated. Today, DSPs have access to advanced routing software, real-time reporting systems, and driver monitoring tools that track everything from delivery times to driver safety. This definitely makes operations more efficient, but it also means there's a lot more data to manage. For newer operators, staying on top of all of this information can be overwhelming. One of the biggest changes is the addition of cameras in every vehicle. These help ensure that both drivers 
and the community stay safer. With a strong management team in place, you can monitor your driver's performance more closely and provide timely feedback to keep everything running smoothly. So while the tech has added some complexity, it also opens up opportunity to improve safety and efficiency if you use it right. And speaking about safety, this brings me to my last point, safety and compliance standards. In 2018, there was safety protocols in place, but they weren't nearly as strict as what we're seeing today. Now Amazon enforces rigorous safety and compliance regulations across the board. This includes things like the in-vehicle cameras that monitor driver behavior, detailed safety training, and real-time feedback systems. If your drivers aren't meeting these standards, it can seriously impact your performance metric and even your ability to hold on to your routes. Early on, as a DSP owner, you were responsible for training your team yourself. But now Amazon has stepped in with a more structured training system. And depending on your location, new drivers go through a three to five days of Amazon provided training along with an on the road assessment. This enhanced training has been a big win for the DSP network, improving the overall safety and preparedness of your drivers. That said, non-compliance isn't something to take lightly. If you're not keeping up with these safety standards, it can lead to financial penalties or in extreme cases, the loss of your DSP contract. So staying on top of compliance is crucial if you want to succeed in 2024. One last bonus change I'll give you guys is in 2018, DSPs were primarily handling Amazon package deliveries, but now there's a broader scope of service to manage. DSPs are not only delivering standard packages, but also handling grocery deliveries through Amazon Fresh, same day deliveries, and even larger items. This adds complexity to operations and require different types of vehicles, drivers, and expertise to manage it all. So there you have it. These are, in my opinion, the most impactful changes for the Amazon DSP program between 2018 and 2024. The program has evolved significantly with tighter margins, higher expectations, and more competition. But for those who can navigate these challenges, there's still a lot of potential to start your own business with strong profitability. If you're thinking about joining the DSP program, my advice is to be prepared with the right approach and watch my video about the DSP application process.